Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I'm back. All is well. I will talk a little bit more about like my little break that I needed to take a little bit farther down in the video and if you follow me on Instagram, chances are you've already heard about it. But first, we're gonna do skincare and because I love knowing what other people use for skincare, I'm gonna show you what I'm currently using for skincare. So it is currently Saturday and for those who have watched my videos, you'll know that Saturdays are like the day that I've made for myself to have a slower morning to sleep in and it's also a day where if I can I try to do a little bit of extra self-care. For me skincare I've found recently is just really less is more. The less I have in my skincare routine even on my like extra days I just my skin's so much better it reacts a lot better and it's just easier for me it's also more affordable for me. So which hazel toner like no matter how much I try other toners I love witch hazel toner, just how it makes my skin feel, how it just helps get anything extra off of my skin, and it's just so gentle and so nice, and so I basically use it unless I'm having a really bad like acne day where I need something with like glycolic acid or something stronger, witch hazel toner is literally just a go-to for me. Always make sure you do with your neck, and I've recently been trying to take care of my chest a lot more again, like the skin on my chest. It's been an up and down battle with me. That skin on my chest has been, let's just say it changed a lot over the years. So I've really been trying my best to kind of take care of it now, see if that really changes anything. Okay, I did a collab with Ferreo, which is like a skincare brand, and this is like their skincare like facial machine. And I love this product, but it is a pricey product. But a hack that I found that I shared in my other YouTube videos is if you do end up buying a machine like this and you're just worried about paying for these guys because you keep having to rebuy their little like packets, but if you don't want to keep rebuying them, you can use your actual just serum on them. And so I'm going to do that. I'll show you all how I do that because that's just something that's been helping me out. So I'm just going to turn the app on here. So I just got it to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ordinary niacinamide and zinc and I'm going to put a little bit onto here. Or you can even just put it on your face and then use the mask on your face. That's actually probably more effective. And I'm just gonna start going. So red means that it's warm right now. And then it kind of just changes temperatures and eventually starts buzzing. I find that sometimes depending on what serum I use, like so you can hear buzzing. Um, sometimes the serum does tend to dry up a little bit. So I'll either add more or I'll just kind of like, instead of pulling on my skin, I'll just dab and press. But again, this is very much like an extra step to my skincare routine, not, not the full thing. Now that that's done, my next step is serum. I'm really exploring natural serums now. That's like my next skincare obsession thing, I think. It was like SPF at the beginning of the summer and now it's skincare serums that are like more on the natural side. So I've been loving this one from Stomology. It's their Cell Revive Serum complete with SRC7. I shared this in like my spa day video the other day. The other day, I say that like a month ago, maybe two now, and I still really love it. It makes my skin feel so, so, so good. I'm gonna be trying to explore a lot more different serums. And another thing is I actually stopped using any sort of eye cream. So I began to develop Melia under my eyes and I couldn't figure out why for the longest time. And Melia is basically like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like pimples, but they're not pimples. It's like these white dots that appear. They can appear really anywhere on your face, I think. But mine were just under my eyes and like you can't really get rid of them. Like I don't know if there's any treatments for them. You kind of just have to wait for them to disappear on their own. And it takes them a while to do so. Don't even try to ever pop them because I tried to pop one. It was absolutely horrible. Anyways, I kept getting them under my eyes. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think it was from overproduction of collagen or something like that and so I stopped using eye creams like I just use my regular lotion like under my eyes a little bit and it's been working well I still have a few like a few but they're mostly gone so I think that maybe that was just what was going on there was just too much product or maybe but I was using a variety of eye creams I don't know if it was like one specific eye cream or just my eyes didn't like having eye cream but if you're someone who does have like these white dots that aren't pimples you don't know what's going on check your products if you're using eye cream maybe stop using eye cream for a bit to see what's up and the last product that i use is my spf still so right now i'm trying to empty out my like darker tinted one so i have two i have this one which is from the origins and then i have one from supergoop i think i really love the one from supergoop a lot more but that one like the tint is much lighter versus this one the tint is 
darker. And as the seasons are changing, if my tan hasn't already completely faded, um, it will. And so I want to use this bad boy up because it's not going to be good next summer. So I've been using this as my SPF. And yeah, I love it. It smells summery. So right now, as the seasons are changing, I think it's also helping me to have a nice like, citrusy smelling SPF. If you're like me and you're trying to get rid of all your summer makeup before you need to <laughs> switch over to your winter makeup. And with hair products, it's the same thing as skincare for me. I find that less is more. When I use less in my hair, it's just clean for much longer, obviously, and that just helps me out overall. So I only use one product after the shower. I did a collab with this brand, or this actually a local hair salon. I did a collab with them last year right before Christmas and they gave me these products and I fell in love with one of these and I've used it every single time I've washed my hair since and I'm obsessed with it. So this is the Davines Oi All-in-One Milk with Roku Oil. I like to spray it into my hand, just not on my hair, I don't know why, and then I rub it in between my fingers and then I just kind of go lightly because if I spray it into my hair I find that there's just pee parts that have too much product and then you can feel it after and nothing drives me crazy more than having freshly clean hair but you can feel that there's like product in it or like you didn't you know wash out your conditioner well enough or something so I do that and then as I do that I really try to lightly brush it out with my fingers gently before I go in with a brush now that I've done that I take a wet tooth comb and brush my hair all right, now I will get ready and then we'll have a chit chat. But first, green tea. So green tea's been like my newest obsession, believe it or not, coffee has taken a second place to green tea. So green tea is actually one of those things where I've added into my healthy lifestyle as like a really big component of it. Because after doing a lot of research on it and like speaking to my naturopath, basically I try to drink at least two cups of green tea per day. And then if I don't have one throughout the day and it's just the evening time and I'm having like my last cup of tea for the day, I double up and I actually put in two tea bags rather than one just so it's stronger and I get more of the benefits. But green tea has tons of different benefits depending what you want, but it's really good for helping with your immunity. It's really good with helping with inflammation within your body, for just helping you reduce stress. It's good for your skin. There's lots of antioxidants in it. And honestly, the list just goes on and on. I love it black, but a really healthy way to sweeten it up if it's just a little bit too bland for you is to add some natural honey, like organic honey to it. You can also add stevia or any other natural sweeteners to help sweeten up the taste. You can also add some sort of a milk or a dairy-free milk to also add a little bit of extra something something. But for me, having green tea, especially during the colder months, like it's harder in the summer, but during the colder months is such a must. And so now that we have our tea ready, let's spill the tea. Let's talk. So where have I been? Obviously I took a little like it wasn't long I took a little break from social media both here on YouTube as well as on Instagram I really wasn't posting as much as I was used to posting and that's for a number of reasons but the biggest one being that I just was in a really weird like low place with where my content was going and although I was really not making any cancer related content for like the last two years almost like I wasn't really making cancer videos just like here and there when I would get an idea or I'd mention it here and there but I wasn't really making cancer related content my name and my brand were still very much associated to cancer and the cancer world and I'm very proud of myself that I was able to put myself out there and share such a vulnerable part of my life because I grew up super shy and I grew up learning that I had to hide all my problems and that it was kind of like a bad thing to share the lesser good parts of your life and so I'm just so proud that I was able to break through that and share what was the hardest time of my life and of course that's where my channel started and that's what the content was and to this day my top performing videos are the ones that are cancer related and obviously I understand why but I think that everybody who goes through cancer or any sort of really serious problem in their life whether they're super vocal about it online or not there's just a certain point where you've kind of just had enough like there's just a certain point where you've been living in it for so long and talking about it so much and that's kind of how everybody sees you and what everybody thinks of you and like you just reach a certain point where you've had enough about it and I've had a great support system in my life 
and my community online they have been so amazing you guys have been so amazing and the fact that i put my journey out there not only helped me and i know it helped others but it was just such a vital part of me coming out of it so positive the way that i did but it was just like i said my name my branding everything although i tried really hard just kind of straight away from cancer was just always coming back to cancer and that was just always a topic that was brought up and that was always just what people wanted to talk to me about Although I understand it, I think that a lot of people will understand that at a certain point you just want to move on because for me I feel like there's just so much more to me than cancer and then that part of my life, that really short brief part of my life that I shared online. And as I said, I know that I'm the one that put that out there and I'm so proud of myself and to this day like it's probably one of the best things like I could have done and probably one of my biggest achievements that I'm the most proud of. And so people say, yeah, you did it to yourself. And I did, I did do it to myself by putting my name and my life and such a vulnerable part of my life out there. But I am so much more than that and I'm ready to kind of put that part of my life behind me and to move on, to take the lessons that I learned from that, to take the friendships and the amazing connections both the good and the bad things that happened during that period of my life and move forward and move on having those lessons but also just not constantly living with cancer in my daily vocabulary. That is kind of where I was at where I just felt like I tried to kind of push out of that cancer bubble so hard but then it just kept bringing me back into it and it was just like I always would cave because I was like, you know what? It's such a big part of who I was for those two years that I would always kind of let myself go back into that cancer world where at the end of the day, like I just, I really wanted out. And so now I've kind of made that decision where I'm fully ready to put it behind me and to move forward, just sharing what my life is about now because now my life literally has absolutely nothing to do with cancer and that's such a great thing it's such a beautiful thing but a quick side note so although i'm saying i'm putting cancer behind me i do actually have two big projects that are cancer related in the works right now so i'm not saying that i'm going to completely stop talking about cancer because i think that things will still pop up here and there if things pop into my head and i think that they're worth sharing with the world i don't think that i should have to hide them just because i don't want to talk about cancer as much anymore but it's just not going to be a main focus of my channel like at all and yeah when those two projects do eventually become public and stuff like that like they're going to be related to my cancer journey but they're things that i've been working on for a while that are bigger that will take a lot more effort and that i still in my heart from the very beginning of my cancer journey have wanted to put out into the world it's just kind of stuff that has taken a backseat as you know like i said they're kind of bigger things so what's next that is what i said the majority of my break was it was kind of figuring out what to do next i kind of went through a bunch of changes in my personal life and so that kind of also took me into like what can i do what do i want to do how do i want to move forward i love social media i love my online community and sharing stuff with you all but again i kind of wanted to switch that into stuff that was more relevant to my day-to-day -day life and what i'm currently interested and in doing and it was just a balance of like finding what is interesting, what people would like to see, but what is also interesting to me and what I would like to keep doing for the long haul. Basically, it's coming down to the same reason that I started my YouTube channel because I just want to keep sharing my life and sharing the things that I'm learning and sharing how things are going because that's really what my cancer journey started. It was me sharing the fact that I was going through this at a young age and that there was not really much out there in regards to people that I could relate to. And so me sharing basically what was happening in my life, how I was navigating that, things I was trying, things that worked, things that didn't work. At the end of the day, that is what it was. And so that's kind of what I wanna keep doing, sharing my life, but just how it is now. So sharing what it's like for me to balance a crazy schedule and new adventures, new endeavors, while also trying to learn more about my body, trying to learn more about healthy living and positivity and mindset. I'm really big into self-development and self-growth now and sharing all of that with you because I know that there are lots of women, young women who follow me who may see themselves in the same spots as me or who may want to kind of take on the same path that I've taken on recently with lots of changes and lots of growth that I have done over the last two years. And I know that younger me really needed somebody like this when I was shy and quiet and I wanted to grow and grow and I just, I didn't know what I had to do to get there and to be able to make those changes in my life. 
this is the type of channel and person that younger me would have loved to watch. So I think moving forward, I'm just going to keep sharing things about my life and hoping that a lot of you can just relate to me and if not, take little tidbits of it. And that's really what excites me right now. And I know I've used the phrase, know yourself, know your body all the time. And I'm probably going to close out my videos like that forever because it's so important. And of course, healthy lifestyle, like know yourself, know your body. That's what I'm embodying. But I want you all to grow with me. I want you all to either take little things that I say or take things, other big things that I say and try to incorporate those into your life so you can also grow and you can also develop into happier, healthier versions of yourself. Whether it's only one aspect or all aspects, just to be able to actually live a happier and healthier life. And basically gonna be sharing like healthy living, positivity, mindset, kind of what I've been doing, but just in a more serious way with you all moving forward. So with that being said, I know that the majority of you have been here because of my cancer journey. And if the content that I'm doing moving forward no longer serves you, then thank you so much for sticking with me this far. And thank you so much for supporting me. And I hope that you got what you needed from me out of my channel. And I wish you all the best. For those who are interested and for those who are new here, thank you so much for your support. And I really hope that we're able to grow together. And I really hope that we're able to create this big community because this is what I think we need to do. Create community, create growth, positivity, and just support one another. So let's get down to like the basics. So basically what I'm gonna be doing moving forward, I think that will be the best for my life right now, is I do have various social media platforms. I have Instagram, I have YouTube, I have a blog. And so I think I'm gonna try my best to be as present on all of them as I can, but obviously don't wanna overdo it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be posting a YouTube video every two weeks. So every Sunday, I'm going to be posting a YouTube video. And then every other Sunday, I'll be doing a blog post. So I can do a blog post and a YouTube video and I'll make them on different topics. And that way we can have the best of both worlds without Meg's being overworked and exhausted and being able to put out the best that I can. So I'm gonna leave the links to everything down below. If you do follow my blog, I would love it if you subscribe to my newsletter and to my mailing list. So I will also leave all the information that you need down below. But that was a big ramble. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this kind of clears things up. I'm really looking forward to the future and to just kind of putting out things that are super relevant to my current lifestyle. So that is it, that is all. Know yourself, know your body, and until next time, and let's grow together.